Hello. Well, today I want to talk about some uh, movies and stuff that I got uh, since uh, my last uh, sort of update video. Um, and also since last week was my birthday, um, might show off some stuff that I've got, uh, you know, for my birthday. Um, one thing I got was <laughs> my mom decided to give me a R2-D2 pillow, which is a uh, uh, pretty cool, pretty soft. Everybody should have a R2-D2 pillow because, you know, why not? There's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, uh, also, uh, I got a, uh, first off, before I show the actual book itself. Uh, I have two books of my own. Um, you can go and um, to the link uh, for my uh, link tree uh, in the description. Check out my uh, Western and my uh, short stories. Yeah. People are pretty much just talking about whatever. This is an actual story and I'm writing another uh, book but you know, uh, uh, as to when that will be uh, finished and out, I cannot say. And the other uh, thing I got for my mother exactly on my birthday is Blood Meridian. Um, as of this recording, as of now, I have not read it yet. I have not begun to read it. Um, but I've heard uh, a good amount about this. It is said to be one of the absolutely most violent uh, books ever written. Said to be, uh, by many people, the greatest American novel ever written. A lot of violence. A lot of uh, racial epithets said, because this is uh, before... Uh, slavery, slavery was abolished in the you know, 1800s, and so, you know, well, there's black people and, you know, Mexicans, you know, even after uh, slavery was over, uh, people were called uh, derogatory names, but, yeah, that is definitely uh, in this book, as is, like, uh, other unpleasantries like rape and just other vile and terrible things that would happen in the Old West. So, um, this is the uh, 25th anniversary edition. So it's even more cool and that's, that's really it. Um, Blood Meridian. So yeah, I, uh, curious to read it and see just uh, exactly how violent and everything this book is. Also, I, I, I'm hoping that it'll be an overall a very good book. Not just because it's violent or anything, but I, I'm curious how violent it is. Uh, Cormac McCarthy, he wrote uh, No Country for Old Men. I have seen that film, not read the book, don't have the book. But, um, that was quite the film. Um, I talked about the film not that long ago, so there you go. And, um, and I didn't know I was getting this, so that's pretty cool. You know, I guess the full title is Blood Meridian, or The Evening Redness in the West. This is a book that has been tried to be, people have tried to make this into a film, uh, Ridley Scott, I believe, uh, tried to make this, but studios will not typically uh, touch this due to the fact of how violent um, and, uh, you know, disturbing the content of the book is. And it seems like one of those things where you couldn't exactly not include all that into the into the, a movie adaptation, because otherwise if you sort of try to subtract some of that, you sort of lose some of the uh, 
uh, essence of what makes the book great. And so it would be hard to do the uh, film version justice of this book. Um, uh, of course, that would also mean you'd have to be very creative. And in some cases, as people have pointed out, well, like the Hayes Code way back when that made people have to censor them the uh, movies and such what made uh, uh, stuff really good at the same time people had to uh, really be creative and nowadays in a way um you know nowadays uh there seems to be a complete lack of creativity that's what people uh, complain about with movies anymore people are not creative the people who are creative there's very few who get to do stuff on a big scale. Everyone else, they're pretty much the indie route and getting their movies just flat out made, let alone released to a wide audience, is incredibly hard. So a movie like this, that would need a lot of studio backing because it's a Western, it's a period piece. A lot of violence and such happens and you would absolutely have to make sure you do justice to the material even if you did uh, edit some stuff to make it very uh, as tame as you possibly could with retaining the overall story you never know sometimes that is easier said than done and is almost impossible in some circumstances so who knows if this could ever be actually adapted in any way that could be seen as faithful to the book Again, I have not read the book yet, but uh, from what I have heard briefly, you know, I watched some videos of some people talking about it before they got into real major spoilers. I kind of tuned out because I, I heard enough to where I'm like, I really want to read this book. And I did get this book, obviously, for my birthday, so that's pretty cool. So hopefully I'll be able to see what everyone's talk that some of the people are talking about regarding this book um, and just just how it would be uh, near impossible to ever actually have a film adaptation because uh, also from the way some people have talked about it like you wouldn't want this to be like a mini series and have it be uh, sort of pre or prolonged like a weekly basis essentially you'd want it to be like a like a three hour or so film at least to have the overall core of the story or of the story and uh, it's over 300 pages long uh, about 300 uh, about 350 so yeah you have to definitely uh, figure out a way to Make this palatable for people while also retaining enough of the content that would make it controversial. So, yeah. That is that book. Just put that right here. And so now I shall uh, begin just talking about some of the films I have since got. Um, I will actually start off, uh, you know, it's not long my birthday today, but... A couple movies I got this week, uh, or this week that is the before you actually see this, which is the day, uh, which is May 25th, so last week, but this week in the present of me talking and recording this video. I think that makes sense. If it doesn't, oh well. Anyway, something I got, which I... Didn't exactly plan on, but uh, wasn't a uh, went to Target and uh, these movies weren't a real terrible price. Uh, it's Cocaine Bear. I've not seen this yet, but it is quite. Uh, I've heard quite a bit about it, so I'm like, you know, I've heard people say it's bad. Some say it's so bad it's good. I'm just curious to see how this is, you know, if it is stupid and everything. Alrighty. Um, it's one of Ray Liotta's last films. I do know that. So, rest in peace, Ray Liotta. He was a very good actor. And then I also have uh, Licorice Pizza from Paul Thomas Anderson. 
Um, this uh, stars uh, Cooper Hoffman, who is Philip Seymour Hoffman's son. Philip Seymour Hoffman uh, worked with Paul Thomas Anderson quite a bit. Also, Alana, I am Sean Penn, Tom Waits, Bradley Cooper, as a famous uh, producer, former hairstylist for Barbara Streisand, who that's how he got his start. Uh, you know, John Peters famously produced Batman and Batman Returns, and those part of films, and Benny Safdie. Um, yeah, this includes a poster, which is quite small. See, quite a small poster. And here's like a little collage on the back, which is pretty cool. But yeah, licorice pizza. I've heard some sort of uh, mixed stuff on this film. Some say it's a very good film. Some say it's all right. It's, eh, not the greatest, but you know, it is what it is. And I shall uh, find out soon. Um, other film I got is uh, Napoleon Dynamite. Uh, Ten Sweet Years of lighter magic tots and sweet skills now this is a film that i actually got that was actually used in, in good condition you know just normal sort of wear and tear i had to clean up the discs a bit um, but overall it's pretty good um, i did have to tape this because well it was starting to come undone but wasn't too bad overall, though, and, um, you know, uh, I had wanted this version for some time, and I found it on eBay at a pretty, uh, uh, pretty good price. There were some other prices that were, like, you know, either, you know, they were brand new and not opened, yet, um, they were really ridiculously priced, or if they were reasonably priced, when you go and you know click on it, it had already been sold. So it's like you were like a uh, a couple seconds too late to actually get it. So that seems to be my luck sometimes. But the but this was not a terrible uh, uh, purchase. I found you know I have no problem with this version. And then it has this. It's all fuzzy. Because, you know, ligers. And ligers are great. So this is a bit annoying to always trying to get it back in. But, yeah. Considering this film came out in 2004. And this, of course, this version came out in 2014. Next year is its 20th anniversary. And then I kind of it kind of dawned on me. You know, if I waited next year, I could get the 4K version, which I would guess also would have a Blu-ray. I guess it has a Blu-ray and DVD. But that thought occurred to me after I got it. I was watching the film again. And, um, and I do have the DVD version somewhere downstairs in a box somewhere because it would move at one point but then didn't. So some stuff just never got unpacked. Um, but yeah, this is a good film still after all these years. I also got a, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 4K. Um, now there was a couple, of, there's another version out there for Britain, um, which has uh, two Blu-ray discs and a 4K Blu-ray disc. Um, mine has a 4K Blu-ray disc as well as a normal Blu-ray disc for all the special features. And on the first disc the, with the actual film, it has all the commentaries and such, whereas the 
Blu-ray just has all the special features, which is cool. Um, I got this because, well, it just looks cool. Uh, and also the uh, other, the, the one from uh, Britain is uh, Region B locked, Region 2 locked. So I wouldn't be able to watch all the uh, special features on the Blu-ray or even see if the Blu-ray uh, version of the film would work. And I'm somebody who loves to, you know, uh, check all the discs, make sure everything is good. Um, but yeah, this version is very good. Um, uh, considering the film was like on a uh, shot on, um, I believe, a uh, 16 millimeter, I believe, which is not the greatest uh, film to actually shoot on. But it looks actually really good. You know, the film grain looks pretty good for 4K. It does not look horrible at all. And um, this comes with a poster, too. Um, with two sides, one of which is also the other non-steelbook version that you can get. The cover, with the eyeball with leather face coming out with the chainsaw, and then the back is the uh, classic poster. Um, And to get the discs out, I can show you the uh, what is on the inside of the steel book. And overall, in terms of special features and such, um, the version here in America and or North America, as well as Britain, UK, Region 2, uh, Region B land. Um, all the special features and everything is good. Uh, it's the same. There is a different 4K transfer that was done, which uh, sort of like makes certain things not as dark. And this is a film that should be dark when it's dark not to the point where you can't see anything but you can but you know uh, i can't just making sure that's all in there but this version that i have uh it is pretty well done in terms of like the darkness and everything um however the region 2 version does have a cool book, which for me, that would have been the only reason to have gotten that, but I'm fine with this. And for me, the only reason I would ever get that version somewhere down the line is if I were to get a uh, region free uh, player. That way I could uh, watch it and uh, you know, enjoy it. Uh, Here is uh, Hoosiers, but starring uh, Gene Hackman and Dennis Hopper, Barbara Hershey. It's got D Dennis Hopper, his second and last Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor. This came out the exact same year as uh, Blue Velvet, which I have talked about on this channel already. And I have said before, I believe that it was the superior performance, but because of the time, uh, you know, of the 80s, they didn't really want to acknowledge too many dark films, which is interesting how David Lynch got nominated for Best Director for that film, but Dennis Hopper being the villain and uh, incredible and probably giving his best performance. I, In my opinion, that is his best performance, but everyone's different. But for me, Blue Velvet, uh, you know, he should have gotten an Academy Award nomination for that film instead of this. But Though he is really good in this. So I don't want to take that away from 
him, but it, it, in terms of that, but you know, he he is really good at Blue Velvet. Um, should have gotten an Academy Award nomination for Blue Velvet as well as The Wit, in my opinion. That that performance was just stellar, and um, yeah, I. I can't think of any buddy for supporting actor of, uh, of 1986 that would have been better than Hopper in Hoosiers, but or in Blue Velvet. Um, so Hoosiers is a very good film, though. My favorite uh, sports film, you know, it's a basketball film about a high school basketball coach. Uh, he's got a checkered past of his a. Uh, uh, Having to try to lead the uh, this uh, basketball team to uh, all the way to the best like the, the championship and everything, so uh, it's inspired by a true story. Um, just a very good film, very inspirational too. Just uh, just a great film overall. Uh, I'll probably talk about this. At some point, so that will no doubt be fun. I also got uh, the Maltese Falcon on 4K. Um, I've talked about this already before, you know, for the 80th anniversary of this film, and uh, still great. The transfer is excellent, and uh, yeah, all the special features and everything are. Truly incredible. Uh, Bogart is excellent. Uh, Mary Astor is excellent. Peter Lorre is excellent. And uh, Sydney uh, Greenstreet uh, does a great job. And this was his first film, uh, Sydney Greenstreet, and he got nominated for an Academy Award. Um, I'm not going to say it was not well deserved. He was excellent, though I do like Peter Vore in uh, this film, too. I think it would have been cool if he was nominated for an Academy Award also, but, you know, what are you going to do? Not everybody gets nominated for an Academy Award. Um, I also got uh, a Steelbook version of Sicario, which was something I wanted for a while, but, I mean, I have the film, but I'll probably give that to a Blu-ray to my uh, <laughs> mom. She likes it, as do I. And uh, yeah, this is really cool. Emily Blunt, Benicio Del Toro, Josh Brolin. You know, I've uh, gotten steel books. Uh, obviously, I made a video about all the steel books I've got. But um, here's a, from a scene from the film. If you've seen it, you know what that is. Um, and I could probably talk about this film at some point. Um, there's supposed to be a third, but I think part of the reason the third film has not ever been really materialized, at least in even in written, is due to the fact that uh, the writer of this of these two films, Taylor uh, Sheridan, uh, he's busy working on like Yellowstone, I believe, and some other projects. So I hope he gets to doing a Sicario three. Um, so I love to see that film. I like to see this conclusion to a trilogy. That'd be great. Uh, this big thing, I got a uh, weird, uh, the Al Yankovic story, the 100% true story of Weird Al Yankovic, starring Daniel Radcliffe as Weird Al and uh, Rain Wilson as Dr. Demento and Evan Rachel Wood as Madonna. Um, this is just the 4K film, and uh, this is from Australia. So I got the 4K version because, you know, with the 4K, you can actually uh, watch it wherever.
Blu-ray is region locked. It is, you don't have a region free player. You're not really going to be able to do much other than have this uh, cool, neat uh, set uh, here. And uh, it's rated M for crude humor, uh, comedic violence, and drug use. Because uh, we all know Weird Al is a famous drug user. And even full-blown alcoholic. Um, and this includes a, uh, some uh, cool uh, like, like, uh, cards for the film. Madonna. Madonna and Weird Al. Weird Al with baloney. Or Bologna. There you go. There's the man himself. Uh, the real Weird Al as a record... Uh, head of a record label. Eat it. An original work. It was not a parody. Michael Jackson made the parody, just so you know. Him with his uh, platinum uh, records. He always makes sure... He always makes sure to wear them around his uh, neck. And here he is in his huge mansion. There he is, uh, his Hawaiian shirt. And then here it is again, the first one, which uh, also has uh, Dr. Demento and his band, a couple of his band members. It's really cool. And uh, here is a cool. Uh, book with it so I'm not going to go into all that and also the back of this here just like that but I've uh, taken it off because well it was going to come off anyway so might as well just take it off and then put the film back in and there you go Umbrella Entertainment Being from Australia, it took a while to get here, but, you know, hey, it got here, and I watched it and enjoyed it, so that's uh, what's important. Also got um, All Quiet on the Western Front on Blu-ray, the 4K and Blu-ray. Great film. Uh, looks amazing. And uh, I also got the original film. I had to get this again because, well, first time... Well, I had a I sort of like to from Amazon because I got a, uh, they gave me the DVD version instead of the Blu-ray, but I have the Blu-ray, so that's good. I got the correct version, and uh, the presentation of this is excellent, and uh, got a cool, uh, little book like that I'm gonna I'm gonna be very careful because apparently some people have uh, have problems with uh, that uh, so the page is falling out so I want to make sure to not have any of that happen but uh, yeah one day I'll probably talk about these two films um, maybe even talk about some of the differences and such so there's that. And then some Arrow films. Robocop. I'll probably talk about this at some point, so I don't need to go into everything here, but Robocop. I remember watching it and uh, and this is a poster which is exactly as a cool artwork here in a booklet i remember watching it on some uh, channel one year i mean i had seen it before but i rewatched it very vividly it was like one of those channels with all the same uh with with all the uh swearing and violence and text and yet there's a bunch of commercials so that's always pleasant but it's, it was also it was part of a uh Movies that don't suck and 
RoboCop is a movie that does not suck. So in case you were ever wondering, it was officially on a channel that uh, made sure it, it uh, brand certain films as such as they were showing them. So RoboCop does not suck. And I would agree with that. It's very entertaining. I could have probably gotten this for 4K also from Arrow, but I just thought this was really cool. And, uh, you know, it was new. It was... Got it from, like, uh, eBay. It was at a pretty good... Uh, uh, it was at a good price. That was a hard word to f uh, uh, find or and think of. Good price. Never opened until I got it, and it works well. So, no complaints. And another Arrow release. True Romance on 4K, because I have the Blu-ray in here. And, um... I don't know everybody would be fond of this film. It's written by Tarantino, directed by Tony Scott, starring Christian Slater, Patricia Arquette, Dennis Hopper, Val Kilmer, Gary Oldman, Brad Pitt, Christopher Walken. I enjoy it myself. Dialogue, I think, is pretty cool. Um, of course, it's the original poster. And uh, there are some other versions, like a steel book of this, but I kind of thought... This just looked better. And, uh, yeah. Poster with that, as well as the original poster art. As well as a cool book. But, yeah, I... I, I like this film. It was really cool to look... Uh, watch it and see it in 4K. Um, I'm happy with this uh, version. So, yeah. And I like the comic book logo that this has. Just look cool. Uh, here is another Tarantino type film, um, Four Rooms, which um, is an anthology film starring Tim Roth. And um, this was one of a specific company in uh, like a North, like a South Korea, yeah. Or at least, it, at least the language is in uh, Korean. And but here's another poster, the original poster, the poster. Ted the Bell Hop. Uh, yeah, the other filmmakers. Come on, go back in. Are. Uh, Allison Anders, Alexandre, Alexander Rockwell, Robert Rodriguez, and Quentin Tarantino. And they all wrote their stories, or the films, or the, their segments. They all wrote those. And uh, this is a fun film. It's like a slapstick. A lot of language. <laughs> Violence. Bruce Willis is in here. He doesn't get credit. Bruce Willis is, is pretty cool. Got Madonna also, and uh, Antonio Banderas. Yeah. Very good film. Uh, fun film. I'll probably talk about this at some point, too. I've been thinking about doing some stuff that Tarantino, you know, wrote, and he didn't really direct. So as soon as I have uh, uh, Natural Born Killers, as well as the From Dusk Till Dawn films... So, uh, yeah, I'll probably talk about all those at some point. Not sure when. Can't guarantee that will ever happen sometime soon. Uh, it could, but I don't want to guarantee you that. Just like I can't guarantee you my next book will be out sometime by the end of the year. It could, but I don't want to say it definitely will, because I could potent potentially uh, have to redo something with that book. But, yeah. Anyway, uh, you all know I love The Lighthouse. I've talked about it a lot. Fair film of 2019. Great film. Well, A24 uh, has uh, their 4K version out. Um, as well as a, another Blu-ray version. This has uh, some new special features as well as this cool uh, little thing with this uh, booklet, which they or book and here's the 4k disc and this is the kind of a 
cool book and stuff of like artwork and other things and pictures behind the scenes photographs and yeah just a lot of cool stuff that came with this and um the 4k presentation of this looks excellent and, and a24 has been doing stuff like this for quite some time there you go there's that Uh, and this came in uh, this cool box. I kept this just to show uh, uh, for this video. I'll probably I'll probably just throw this out afterwards. But yeah, a twenty four. Um, yeah, this is a excellent film. Still love it, and I think this uh, is really cool. Arrow is coming out with their own 4K version of this. And I already have pre-ordered that. And I'm sure some people will say, well, that's kind of dumb. Why would you pretty much uh, order another version of this film in 4K when you already have it in 4K? And the reason is because that's going to have some special features and stuff that isn't here. And so I, I love this film so much. I just want want to have uh the best sort of ex like best sort of stuff of the white house i just you know when you love a film so much you just want to try to have the best version of that as possible uh, the lighthouse is one of those films for me i just want to have the best and arrow is able to have an excellent version that is just as good as this and that also has a few more special feet, has some more special features, and a also booklet and such like that. Uh, I'm all for uh, getting it. And if Criterion ever one day gets uh, this film, which I don't know if they will, but they do have or have been releasing some A24 films, especially with 4K. Then I will probably look into that if there's anything uh, new from Criterion, especially. Then sure, I would get that again for a third time, or fourth time actually. So, yeah. No doubt people will see this and feel like you, you have the same movie three times. Well, that happens sometimes. And a film that came out on my birthday, but I had actually reordered and I got it, and uh, which was kind of uh, odd. Cause sometimes the criterion doesn't always, you know, uh, at least from the experience I've had when you pre-order something, you don't always get it, or you don't always get like some sort of notification of when it's shipped always but you know it comes out either just a little before the actual release date or on the release date and for this film it that came out on my birthday that film is targets from criterion which is one of the very last films uh boris karloff ever made i believe this is his final uh american film at least the, the last one that is quite, you know, noteworthy. And uh, it's inspired by um, uh, Charles. Uh, oh, well, shoot. I, I go to say his name and I'm, I've already forgotten. Charles Whitman. There you go. The uh, guy who was in Texas in that university and was shooting at people. Knew something was wrong with him. Didn't know what. Had urges to kill. And then he, you know, seemed to be overall a pretty model kind of guy. He was in the Marine Corps. Somebody who liked it. He was very, seemed to be very well liked. And just, uh, yeah, he... Uh, basically had like a tumor is what the consensus is that sort of up on somewhere where it's kind of like has like a fire flight sort of response and 
your head and your brain and you know he kind of knew he was going to do something terrible and wanted to be studied and so it was and uh the last film is a uh, star wars on 4k the zombie version with uh, region free blu-ray discs and this is this does have McClunky, uh, the Greedo saying that, which means the this is the end of you, just before uh, he and Han shoot at each other pretty much at the same time, and he still dies. Great presentation, great 4K uh, uh, presentation. Um, still my favorite film of all time. And as you on the day you watch this, this film is 46 years old. Return of the Jedi is officially 40 years old. Um, and for me, I uh, wanted to also address something that I don't know if I made very clear for the Return of the Jedi video I made last week. But uh, part of why also I didn't see Empire Strikes Back in the theater was because, you know, I, it was a cinemark theaters and so you know as i i think i've mentioned before you know you get a certain amount of credits if you're part of like a membership and it, you have so many credits and um, that's part of why i've been able to see as many movies as i have over the years is because you yeah, <clears throat> have a uh, various credits to see various films and so you save enough up and you can go and watch a movie without having to actually pay for actual cash and uh, in person basically or whatever so it saves money and so in 2020 you know I saw the re-release of Inception so I could see that in the theater for the first time and I saw Tenet twice and so that kind of really <laughs> you know spent the hell oh, a lot of the credits that I had that I could go and watch films for almost free for the most part you know having to pay for like uh, snacks and such uh in the theater you know other things you know that it's kind of an interesting time for movie theaters though but yeah um i wanted to clarify that because i don't think i really did so very well and um and and this was at, actually at a pretty decent price. Um, I never got this when well, they were uh, sold originally in 2020. Didn't know about it, and when I did find out about it, uh, because of the ratings here, and as uh, also where I found this, couldn't look on the back of it, so I had no clue that their uh, Blu-ray discs were region free. Had I known that, I probably would have gotten this as well as the other five films that George Lucas <clears throat> you know did for Star Wars but um you know I um, I might get the others at some point maybe this year if they're you know decently priced I've I've seen a few flow around on eBay and uh Amazon from sellers for like um pretty fairly reasonable prices so you know this was a little more uh, pricey than some of the others i've seen that are here in america but you know that was but this was like from britain and it was like a week or so to get here but it got here presentation is excellent and i'm going to basically go on a limb and we'll probably say the other five have a great uh, presentation, too. There's no real way for me to get all of uh, uh, six of them together in such a way where uh, it's actually quite uh, uh, at a reasonable, uh, uh, pretty reasonable price because I've seen the Disney films also included. <clears throat> And I'm not the biggest fan of those the Disney films. I've talked enough about those. You know, the uh, 
Star Wars films under Disney. You know, uh, I've made it clear for me, Star Wars is George Lucas, and without him, it's, I, I don't really see that Star Wars, that's me. If you're different, it's fantastic. I, <laughs> I have no uh, animosity or anything towards you, though I know some people seem to take it that way if you're not fond of certain films or something you know, under certain ownership or different uh, uh, guidance of sorts of by like a producer or writer or director or what have you. I mean, everybody enjoys things differently. But it'd be cool to have all the other uh, Lucas uh, made Star Wars films on 4K and also these cool steel books. Sometimes the steel books are kind of better than the overall, you know, normal covers. And that's pretty much when I really try to get steel books is when they're like something like like this and they're cool. Um, otherwise, I have no problem with just getting a normal uh, Blu-ray or, you know, with a typical cover. In some cases, they're slip covers, but, you know, uh, yeah, just depends on the film as well as uh, does it look better than the normal cover? And if so, all right. Otherwise, I'm completely fine without uh, having to, you know, <laughs> pay extra just for a steel book. Um, I know in some cases I do kind of want to have a, some sort of consistency that makes sense. If, if you have a, if you start like a, getting a franchise on Steelbook, I don't know. For me, it would be kind of just cool to have them all be Steelbook. But if I can't, then that's completely fine. Um, plus, some Steelbooks just look pretty lame, too, so. Uh, I think that's always something to look into it. Kind of, does it look cool? Uh, uh, and also, would you do you like the film enough to pay a few extra bucks to get it in a steel book? That really, I think, uh, uh, depends. And also, this was on was not open to. This was not used. It was basically as brand new as possible. You know, it was still wrapped and everything. So, yeah. Pretty decently priced, was not over a hundred bucks or anything, which this is my favorite film of all time. But would I want to pay a hundred bucks for this just one film? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if uh, it would have been that, uh, worth it. But anyway, this is all the stuff I have gotten since from April to May so far. You know, probably will be here for the month. Uh, some of this stuff was for my birthday, others uh, got before my birthday. But yeah, uh, this was a quite lengthy video. I did talk quite a bit about the Blood Meridian book, uh, at least a lot more than I thought I would. Um, but yeah, uh, maybe I'll talk about the book overall one day when I finish it and tell you what I think. And if I do agree with the consensus that it, it is a true masterpiece in terms of uh, novels and literature, as well as perhaps one of the absolute best uh, American books ever read or written, <laughs> or I have ever read, that might be that would make more sense. But yeah, uh, obviously. I, the way I talked about it, it, it was quite, it seems like it was very, you know, uh, hyping it up. And I don't want to hype it up for myself more than, uh, some people kind of made it out <laughs> like it's really good. Um, but I do want to keep my expectations reasonable. And, uh, but I'm, I'm, but for those who I've heard it from, they talk about stuff that's really interesting or cool or 
fascinating, be it films or other things. So I do kind of trust their judgment on if it's a very good book. It probably will be a good book. Um, so, yeah. That's all I have to say. This video is quite long, like 50 minutes. So apologies for the length. But I hope you found this interesting. Have you seen any of these films? Do you like any of these films? Do you dislike any of them? Uh, or do you dislike every single one and think they're all bad? Do you think Blood Meridian is stupid? Uh, you think my books are stupid? Uh, yeah, you can let me know and uh, tell me what you think. And uh, yeah, until next time, I hope all of you are having a great day. Hope you've had a great week. Hope you'll have a great weekend. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.